Oh, hey guys, it's Joe Pickup from so SoMuchMonsters.com. We're going to go ahead and build our low-poly model now. Now that we've built our Fancy Pants high-res sculpt, we'll make that low-poly model to bring into the game and save us millions of polygons. Uh, super, super efficient, and just generally, you know, it's a pretty nice time to have that nice low-poly render. So, a few basic things we want to think about when we, when we start this is, one is, what is the best way for us to build this mesh? For me, in this particular case, since I did not change my silhouette much once I went to ZBrush, um, I feel pretty confident that I should be able to take my high-res model and reduce it down and get a really clean, simple, low-poly model that will represent this mesh very well. Um, you are welcome to do retopology in Topogun or 3D Coat or any, other, any of the other million programs for it, but I'm choosing the uh, Reduce Pass instead. Um, we want to make sure that when we build this, we pay a lot of attention to the silhouette, so things like the curve on the top of the blade, um, the again, the curve on the bottom of the, the pommel, um, those things, we want to make sure that the, the silhouette itself is going to read when uh, we put all that detail on it. The normal map will get all the interior detail, but the shape itself needs to be held up pretty well. Um, also want to consider where you may need to put seams. So in my case, I'm going to add a seam through, like, basically planning to put a seam right across the center of the blade um, horizontally. So we'll split the blade vertically in half. Um, and we also want to make sure we think about how much detail we actually need on the interior that the normal map will not, will not really represent. Uh, and that's it. So let's get right into it. We're going to take the original model. I'm going to just have a copy of this. Low blade. And I'm going to actually use my Turbo Smooth to smooth it out a little bit from my basic shape. You'll see that if I turn off my subdivision, um, especially on the, the tip of the blade, uh, I lose a lot of the shape that was there. If we basically just take the subdivision and commit it, we can get, we can basically reduce, we can re reduce out all of the detail pretty quickly because we were pretty consistent with using quads. So we'll just do some quick selections. Uh, and when we get in there and do that, you'll see this will go pretty quickly. I'll basically just grab all of the interior cuts that don't need to be there and get all the way up to the blade. Apparently I had two separate elements there, that's interesting. Weird. Alright, well, we'll figure that out. And I'll just do a loop selection. Remove them. Let's hide our old model for now. Oops. The old model. And then we'll go in here and do the same on the top edge. We want to use the center line to get our topmost peak of this blade and also the interior of this doesn't necessarily need to be there but I will use the furthest one in and then just take each of these loops and collapse them. Uh, it'll be nice to have a little bit of shape change since this is going to be used in a way that is pretty or pretty front facing. I mean the, the blade of a sword if you're in, if you're in a game like Skyrim, is going to take up a pretty giant portion of the screen. So, um, having a little bit of the interior shape that you know normally I would say uh, is kind of unnecessary, a little bit superfluous, is just going to help us get a little bit nicer looking end result. So, this whole guy is going to be uh, rendered basically. This is what it's going to look like on the UV, UV page, maybe a little bit relaxed. But so we do want to make sure that we have the whole blade accounted for. Um, all the interior sculpt or modeling here can go away. Let me cap this hole. And then we can go and just take these guys. Oh, no, not those guys. We'll remove this edge. So this is actually the one of the simpler ways to make your base model at least for a hard service model. Oh, let's just do this guy. Collapse there. 
So what we're doing, instead of creating a whole new model, we're using the the detail that we've actually created from our original low poly, giving it a little bit more fidelity by subdividing it. And then uh, making sure that when we, hmm, let's do this. Let's get everybody but, oh, we can do all of this. Control backspace on that will remove edges. Um, that's going to remove edges and their vertex counterparts. That's really the process. So we'll go in and just refine. Like I said, I want to refine away most of the detail here. Um, let's zoom in real quick. Cap this. Actually, screw it. Let's just get rid of all of that except for the tip here. Remove them. This plane has no reason to be anything but one plane. It's not doing. It. There's not any complex curve or anything like that. It's pretty flat. So we'll get rid of everything but those exact polygons that are going to contribute to that. And then let's take a look at this. There's some interior edges that we don't need here. And I would say this one is probably also unneeded too. So we'll get a little bit of a curve around this angle here. So that when we render, we'll make sure we get a pretty consistent representation of what was there. Um, and we can go down here and do the same thing we just did. So just grab all of the edges in the middle. This has no business being anything but a little triangular wedge. We just want to make sure that we have all the curves accounted for. And that nothing gets blown out that is holding up a shape. So let's remove those. Remove, we'll just weld these over. Target weld. Oh boy, got a little bit of mess in here. What in the hell was I doing? Okay, we'll resolve that in a minute. Let's deal with the... Oh, man, that is a mess. We'll delete out one. Oh, let's see, that's going to get everybody. I'll grab the edge ring, or sorry, the... Uh, border edges, and I'm going to just delete that first loop there. We'll go down and select one more in. This is a little bit hard to see. I guess I'm used to dealing with some nonsense like this, but I just want to have enough detail or enough detail on this that it goes through the, the blade itself. Make sure it floats correctly, and then let's peek at it. That edge does not need to be there, it looks like. Maybe does it need to be there up on top? For any reason, let's take a look. Looks like no. So get rid of that selection there. Get its counterpart on the other side. We'll connect across here once we remove this edge. Grab two verts, and I can actually use connect. I'm actually, I have a shortcut for it, but Using connect will connect between the two selected vertices. So you can see we've reduced it down quite a bit. Let's uh, take one more peek at the... We're going to be able to take out quite a bit of this. Um, we will want to kind of consider where we will have a seam, because I'll pro since it's going to be really rectangular, I'll probably want to keep this line right here, just so I can have a UV seam across there. So let's, let's remove any non-contributing faces in this region. Looks like this might have a slope. That has a slope. So let's get rid of this guy up here. Control backspace. And we'll get rid of these two up here as well because they are pretty straight. You, you can see that I didn't change the silhouette of the model by deleting those. So they're good. They're gone. We're just going to continue the same process for the rest of the blade and the other portions. Uh, kind of keeping in mind, I'm going to mirror this all over. So if I just build one portion of it, it makes it much simpler on me in the end. I can actually just flip it over some symmetry, and even when I unwrap, I can just quickly do one plane and be done with it. Um, there's some definite issues with this model around the edge of the blade and on that little triangle wedge. Um, resolve them 
actually by rebuilding the portions that are messed up. Uh, you don't have to have the exact same model. I know where the all the edges are going to be, the important portions are going to be, so I can kind of fake it a little bit there. Um, and remember, the, the elements right now, I don't need to have them connected. And to be perfectly honest, that wedge, I probably could render into the main model. I guess I really would like to have a more interesting kind of lighting when you tilt the blade, and I want to actually make it look solid there. So I chose to keep it as a mesh, but you could certainly do that as a separate piece, or without having a separate piece there, and you'd still get a pretty similar res result. Uh, the the portions here, I'm going to leave the handguard as a separate element. Uh, if I had done any sort of welding or anything where the blade and the handguard itself interacted on the top side, I would probably want to make them a single mesh, just so that I don't have to deal with rendering to two different objects. Um, it gets a little bit messy. But yeah, so same process. I subdivided it one time, uh, smoothed it out a little bit, and... Uh, started removing edges away. Now, you could just rebuild this from scratch. There's definitely no reason you couldn't go into Topo Gun and trace all this. Uh, I think that this, in this particular case, because I didn't do anything very organic, um, all my forms are pretty well pretty well pegged to where they need to be just by having that subdivision, that single subdivision. Uh, we can simplify the handle a little bit. We don't have to do too much with it. But yeah, it's pretty much the same process all the way through. Clean it up and you'll see I'll only work on one quarter of this. Remember the less work you have to do, the faster you get it done and the more time you can work on fun stuff. So learn to be efficient and you'll have a lot more fun doing this job. Reducing some things. You can see I've been doing a little bit of collapsing, kind of spidering in the detail towards from the outside edge where I have more detail, I've spidered in by collapsing in um, and reducing the detail towards the interior where I don't have a silhouette to keep up, uh, I can keep that curve pretty pretty solid and pretty smooth um, without blowing a whole lot of polygons on getting that in there. Remember we can always go back and add polygons again after we've done our unwrap and, and rendered it and tested it to see what it looks like. You're going to get some artifacts every once in a while. But it should be pretty pretty straightforward. Now we're going to want to do an unwrap on this. We can do a quick one. I want to attach everything together. Um, the, the, the hilt down here, the handle, is actually going to be asymmetrical because it does have a wind all the way through it that I coiled the leather strap around it. So um, I'll just account for that when I lay things out and pretend like it's not symmetrical right now. Just unwrap it. Oh. I have to attach the blade. Thousand, thousand faces isn't so bad. I'm going to go with this for now. And that's it. So we, now we have our low poly model. Our next step will be to make the low poly model, uh, or to unwrap the low poly model, and, and probably render it. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope, I hope this was informative. This is Joe Pickup from SoMuchMonsters.com.